all that's happening so far because he's a good God. Amen. He sweet I know he sweet yeah
and as long as our trouble rise, I hasten to the throne. Because I love the Lord. Gavin, could you check the camera to make sure it's right? Today we're going to be talking a little bit from Mark chapter 4. Amen. The Lord has been dealing with me on some issues, but he really was dealing with me on Mark chapter 3. But uh, I seen as I was singing in the spirit that he wanted me to go to chapter 4. But since we got some time, and if they want to, those that want to go, want to go, they could go. But right now I have to give the word of God. Amen. I'm not going to rush the word of God because somebody else is having a service. But I have to give the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we're going to uh, Mark chapter 4. And uh, just a little synopsis on chapter 3 is about Jesus healing on the Sabbath day and how people uh, were so looking for something to, 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 to say against them. And that's how it is today. When you're trying to do something right, people are just looking for something to say against you. And they do it all the time. And it's just amazing how Jesus could just stand there and say, it's all right. I understand. And then after that happened, he goes up into the mountain and then he ordained his 12 disciples. That's, that's something to think about. After they, they talk about him for healing on the Sabbath, he said, I don't care what you say, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to ordain my disciples. Can you still stand the rain after people have disrespected you and still do the work of the Lord and ordain other people? Can you? Or would you say, oh, I'm not worthy. I don't think I'm doing the right thing because they told me I can't. Jesus let nothing stop him. He just went on and kept on doing what he had to do. But this is important. He ordained the 12 disciples and he gave them power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. And what I love about that, if you read it through chapter 3 and verse 19, he gave the 12 disciples power to cast out devils, and one of their disciples was a devil. If you read verse 19, and he ordained Judas as scary, which also betrayed him. Ain't that something? You gonna ordain your betrayer. God, that's something. Ain't that something? He even put his betrayer in office with him. Here it is. We can't even walk down the street with our enemy. He lived, ate, snapped, taught his enemy. Jesus. And ordained his enemy. But here you is. I'm too good. Are you my enemy. You made me mad. I ain't gonna ordain you. Why not? That's what he gave you power for. That's something. All right, that's where I wanted to get to, but I can't get into that. And then look at verse 23. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? <laughs> and they called them a devil, but he's doing all the good works, and they ain't doing nothing but what they call him. What do he call him? That's something. All right, let's get into our sermon for a bit. At Mark chapter 4. And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. There was a lot of people. And listen what Jesus did. He taught them. He taught them many things. I've been in many churches and I ain't been taught because they're not teaching. They yell and they scream and they spit. They're not teaching. <laughs> That's not teaching. They yell and scream and they spit. And the hakamaka. That's all they do is not teaching. You think Jesus can have 5,000, 10,000 people watch him if he's doing some hakamaka? They got better things to do unless he's teaching them something that's sound doctrine. And this is what he wants in the church. He wants the church to teach sound doctrine. The good stuff. Just like him. Multitudes didn't come because he knew how to jump and move around. They came because he taught common sense stuff to help them on their everyday journey. 
He showed them how to, to be better at what you do. And he didn't ridicule them. He didn't backbite them. He didn't destroy them. He helped them all the way. And even though they were demons, he helped the demon. What must I do to be saved? I know I'm a demon, but what must I do to be saved? Jesus said, get away from me, demon. But we do that. Oh, they got an unclean spirit. They fire. Look at them. Uh -huh. They coming to my church. Why not? He called the sinner to repentance. Them sinners come in your church for help. And I learned, no matter how long they be there, they're going to change eventually if there's power in your church. So you don't have to kick the sinner out. Judas left. Jesus said, go do what you got to do quickly, but he didn't kick him out. He gave him a chance to say, no, I'm not going to betray you. Mama. We got to learn how to sit together with our enemies. I learned something this week at the way. God is bringing people together. He's bringing people together. He is. And a lot of people preach about division. I don't see it. I see the church getting closer and closer and closer to that day when God said it's time to grow. Because see, you can't see the natural. You gotta see spiritual. And if you see spiritual, you will see the church as a together, not a division. And many people preach the church is mean, the church is wrong, the church is going this way, the church is going that way. The minute Jesus said them, the church will get right. Let me, let me teach you a little something. Here you go, a little Satan got all his imps out there. You think when he blow them imps don't run and get right when he say get right? He said, I need all y'all. Come back. We're going to do this. They all come back and they all going to follow him. So you think Jesus can just say, no, church get right. It's time to work. He said from all four corners of the earth, he's going to call them together and gather them together. So what makes you think they so separated and, and, and the vision that God can't bring it together? He's in charge of everything. I told the person this when I got saved, they didn't believe me, they still don't believe me. I said, there's no way Satan's going to have more people in hell than God got in heaven. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Jesus is undefeated. Ain't no way you're going to have more bodies than him. It's impossible. They don't believe me, but I guarantee you, when you count, he said he have a, a numerable amount of people in the heavens. You can't even count them. And if they can have more, he'll make more people just to get into heaven. Jesus will not be beat by no devil. He said there's more for me than against me. I have people in country that don't even never, ever, ever heard of him. Satan is. They are steadfast waiting for the Lord to call on them. Just like he did in Ezekiel. Can these bones live? If he could make dry bones live, he better have a better army than Satan. You think Satan's going to have a better army than God and have more people with him? That's the food power. It's impossible. People talking about Satan is going to have this. He ain't got jack. What did Jesus say? To pack to fair power? You couldn't have nothing if my father didn't give it to you. You couldn't do nothing to me if my father didn't allow you to. It's all about Jesus. It's all about God. And God will not be undone. Great multitudes, so that he entered into a ship and sat in the sea, and the whole multitude by the sea of the land, and he taught them many things about it, and said unto them, In his doctrine, hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And I love this. I love this here. Because he didn't say what the sower went and sowed. That's what, that's what I love about God in ministry. 
You don't have to tell what people do. How much they gave, how much they didn't give, when they gave, when they didn't give. They don't have to do that. What they gave, it's not your business to tell. He just said, they sow up what to sow. And it came to pass, as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it up. Some fell on stony ground, where they had not much earth, and immediately it sprung up because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was burnt. And because it had no root, it withered away. And many places you hear this, and they always want you to think about money. But if you read the parable and you really get deep into the scripture, he's talking about souls. He's talking about saving souls. And it's sad when you got souls coming to church and you send them to Christ and you help them get their salvation and then they go outside and wither away because there was no root in your ministry. I like that. There was no root in your ministry. So they were not planted right. You just said a bunch of words and nothing worked for them. Because when they went out, immediately the devil took it away. Because it didn't resonate. Because your heart wasn't sincere. Many times people just want them to come to the altar and come to the front just so they can put on TV that I had 500 people at the, at the altar. But you ain't got near their power when they leave here to help them stay safe. Because your heart was not right when you got them to us. I like that. What he's saying is when you sow into people, make sure you're sowing from a firm foundation. Listen to this. I'm, I'm letting you get some stuff here. Just like with a tree. The tree grow, but the branches grow, but the branches are connected to the tree. So the people, if you are a, 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 a strong tree, when they leave, they will be connected to you. And they will grow. That's what it means by good soil. They come, you plant, but if your plant is destroyed, what good is it going to grow? You're withered away. You're dying anyway. What are you going to do with the people? How are you going to help the people if you can't even grow? You're stagnated. You're not growing. No miracles. No nothing. But you want me to come to your altar. For what? To get your stagnant spirit on me? That's okay. That's okay. And it kills me. Not kill me, but it makes me wonder why so many people rush to have an altar call and don't even know the people. They're calling up. Let them see. Let them get to know. Let them feel and understand what they're going up for. I see four new people, oh, we're going to get them saved. And they don't even know what saved means. You're going to get them saved, but they don't even know what the saved means. First, maybe you should teach them. So they can understand why they come into the altar. What is at the altar? What must they lay down at the altar? But all you want to do is say, repeat after me, the Lord is going to do it, and you say, no! It's more to it than that. And this is what he's saying. How are you sowing into people's lives if your life ain't never been sowed into? Remember the scripture? Some people just got up and went. Some was sent, but some just got up and went. Those that got up and went, it was never sowed into. So how are they going to do something for the niggas left? Never sat, never heard, never taught, never learned. But they're going to do their own thing. Next thing you know, the 
people that they call us some help, but it's just as messed up as they are, but they're not connected to nothing. <laughs> That's funny. Imagine that, to be not connected to nothing. The same thing happens with us. They look at it, they, they, you can see our fruit. I was sharing with my wife yesterday. We've been feeding parents for what, four years, five years. Do you know how many people God seen eat? And you think that in connection? He said what you do to the least of my people. So if you're giving them some food every Saturday for five years, for four, you think you ain't got something from God for your glory? Yes. Like Jesus said, don't take my word for it. Just see what happens. People need, they get Whatever you want, you get because you're connected to the glory. Because the glory is doing what's right. I don't tire. Ask my wife, I don't tire. You might hear me mumble a little bit, but I do the work. I do the work. I have to do it. I mumble, I yell, I scream, but it gets done. The Lord knows he can depend on me. I don't know how he does it, but he does it, but he knows it gets done. And that's why I could send people out. I was at work the other day, the lady asked me, so what do you do? I said, I ordain people and send them out to ministry. Really? Yes. Yes. That's what my job foretells of. God gave me a job description, and my job description is to ordain and send out many I ordain 12, and I send out 12, and one might be a ten. Who knows? But I will still do what God said do. Feed them, clothe them, have mercy with them, eat with them, suck with them, and pray with them. But listen to what he said about this soul. And this is another facet of revelation. You got to watch what you sow while it's growing. I always use the scenarios like Jesus' parables. Imagine this. You plant something in the ground and you walk away and don't come back for two years. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to die. You got to sow. Then you follow up on what you sow. Nobody want to teach that. They just want to just bunch of yelling. But nobody want to teach how to really weep people. How to really be benefits from God. How to really make God happy for you. How to really tap into the kingdom of God. And you do this by knowing how to sow into us. Let me tell you something I learned about God. God wants us to work on his people. Not on our form or fashion or our cock or our talking or our jumping. He wants us to work on people. If you spend more time on people than you spend on trying to perfect your ha, they'll be more better. And I'm telling you from what I know, people practice that ha. They do, they sit in the house for hours practicing it, and then they're gonna come here and they, and they got never been a spirit. Just suddenly practice and watch. Rehearsal. They rehearse their ah, come on. Standing on chair. Man, listen. It's a performance. And it shouldn't be. Jesus didn't perform. He performed miracles. If he hot, he healed. You hot and they still limping. <laughs> they still messed up. I'm not being no, I'm not going against it. I'm just saying the things I've seen and the things I've been through, and the Lord is showing me how not to sow discord. This is not a game. And this is where I see it. We was watching the hand of God, and as we watched it, we watched the, 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 the big televangelist, and he was telling the little church how to get on TV and what they must do to. to Get the crowd. It's not about getting the crowd to get the money to give them a 50% of half of it. And they all together. Now they got them stupid. They on TV and 
going straight to hell. Because you're not doing it for God, you're doing it for money and each other. How much you can swindle the people. We don't swindle nothing. Everything goes straight to church and stuff. And it bothers me that these people do this stuff. And then they want to use, take advantage of this little church. I stand up for us. I might be short, but I'm big. Y'all yeah, ain't getting us. Yes. No! Here I am struggling to take care of our ministry and you want me to build up yours but, what, but you have never helped me with mine. When I'm in need you, oh well. You got something for me? No. It's for real. And this is what's going on nowadays. It's all a profit. All the show. And then they talk about us. Because we don't want to go that route. They think they too good to come with us. They don't hop and they don't jump and they don't run and they don't fly over the benches. They don't jump on their chairs and break them. They must not have the anointing. I don't have the anointing because I'm going to fly around the block. <laughs> he ain't got no anointing. He ain't jump and hoop. One pastor told me, I want you to come to my church, I want you to hoop. I said, what's a hoop? You want me to come and hear me hoop? <laughs> Ain't no hoop like. I want to hear you hoop. No, you don't. You want to hear the word of God. If I come, you're going to hear the word of God. You might not call me back, but you're going to hear the word of God while I'm there. And something inside you will change. You got the soul for a purpose. Read my book, Church Where the Purpose is in there. You got to have a purpose. I have a purpose. Ministry is purposely driven. There's a purpose to get everybody fed, clothed, housed, and sent to the Holy of God. That's the purpose of the church. What is your purpose? What is your mission? To see how many people you can swindle? And then go talk to your other pastor about what you did. And then y'all go collect your money together. And then y'all go buy all these fancy stuff. While the people are still going to hell hungry and unlearned. And then you tell them, don't come to the teach, teaching church. Because they want to rob you. <laughs> And they, the ones robbing you, just sitting there like, why are you up for me? Okay, let me. Verse 6, but when the sun was up, it was scorched, and because it had no root, it wasn't connected to God, it withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. You know some of those? You know, I know some of those. You come in here, you get a good word, you dance, you shout, you feel good, you go outside, they start talking stupid talk. You know, I saw Bishop, he had this on YouTube, and I don't think he was right. You was in that church, you should be away from him. Choke the spirit right out of you. Instead of just saying, you know, I, I see you in church getting praise on, I'm glad you feel better. Instead of that, you, you know, I saw a bishop and he had YouTube. And that's why we are protective over our young members because we got to make sure people don't destroy them. Because Satan will sit in your church just to destroy your flock. And that funny spirit running around. I watched it. <laughs> Time is over. God will remove. I don't have to fuss and fight. God will do it his way. I don't. I just pray. And it worked out. I had a discussion with one of my leaders I, I, I minister with. And I'm wondering why, you know, I can't accept that kind of stuff back because it seemed like the place was full of with demons. <clears throat> and, and they explained to me, 
It's not that it's full of demons, because demons is okay to be in the church, but if they don't want to change, then they got to go. Because they cause us a problem. And then if you got something that's rotten, just sitting there, it's gonna rot and spread on everything else. So if they not wanting to change, then they got to go. But it's okay to have some bad spirits in your church if they want to get right. And if they get right in a reasonable amount of time. I was like, wow, I'm learning some stuff. And this is what you need to know. When you open your ministry, okay, it's fine. We got somebody here that does this fine. We know they do this fine. We give them a week. Then we talk to them. All right, we put you on probation. You got 30 days. Straighten out. This is a holy place. Then you just pray and you open your book and you get uncomfortable. Remember we said this before we got said many people are gonna get uncomfortable in this church. God has a peculiar people. That could stay. Not everybody could stay. Can everybody run through the storm that we go through? This church goes through storm after storm after storm after storm. We just went through a storm. When was it? Yesterday. I get a phone call. I get a call too. I'm running all around. God is good. Then I fix it. It's quick. It's, it's, but then I say to myself, why me? There's a hundred other people. Why call me? What were you calling me? Because you get it done right. I'm going to say no one day. You got to find somebody else to get it right. But it was good. I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot that we go through. Because people think they can. And I want everybody to just pray for my sister. Pastor Bradway pray for him. He's a good man. He called me out the blue yesterday this morning and there's a little, nice little discussion. You know, people love you. They don't have to be around you every minute, but they do love you. They do care for you. You might not see them in a year, but they still praying for you. Or you still made an impact in their life. That's what you mean by sowing. Because it grows in them till they will always be connected to you because of what you sow in the child. That's good soil, good ground, good seed, good growth. Y'all getting this? Y'all getting this? This is what you need to realize. What you put in people will either keep them or make them leave. I learned that your conversation will draw honey or sour stuff. How you speak is important. All right, it's getting sunny outside. I gotta go. I don't like the sun. Burn me up. Where we at? And others fell on good ground and did yield fruit that sprung up and increased and brought from some thirty. 60 and some hundred. Remember I told y'all about this last time I did Sunday school, I think it was? And I taught y'all about this scripture right there. That how everybody always want to increase to the hundred because they say it's biblical. Well, I came to let you know, take a limit off of God. There's no cap on God. Don't say a hundred. Don't say 60. Don't say 30. Say as much as you want to give me, Lord. Multiply it as much as you see fit. Because if I say multiply it a hundred fold, and he want to bless me five hundred fold, he can't do it because I said a hundred, and I get what I said. So shut up and don't say no limit. Just say bless me as you see fit. And they don't teach you that in them places because they hide them who. <laughs> And ain't near fear I forgot to sow in the seed in your bitch. Come in here, break all my chairs and all my drums and leave with the oil and offer it, and then ain't so a bit of anything in here. Everybody angry at each other. I'm like, why am I angry? You had the wrong preacher in here. He preached anger. Throwing chairs. Messing my drums. Oh, I broke your sticks. I'm sorry. No, you ain't. Shouldn't have been in here banging so hard. People got no respect. 
my chest better. Breaking my chest, throwing my mic, drop the mic. Don't drop my mic, it costs me too much money. Drop the mic. Go to your own church and drop your mic. Crazy people got <laughs> Foolishness. And it really foolishness. Now listen to this. This is going on YouTube. I don't care if they don't like it. It's true. They come in the church and they make a mess of it. And then they leave and don't come back for another season. <laughs> ain't cool. You ain't say hi. I ain't say nothing. But you tore my church up three weeks later. You still ain't calling me. But we buddies though, right? No, it's wrong. It's not right. Why I go there? <laughs> Woo! But it was, from, and this is what I'm saying, don't put a limit on God. All right? And when somebody does that to your seed, you can always say, it, you know, after they finish it, look, um, you know, let me tell you something. I learned from the Bible, that you get whatever you say, and if you put a hundred on my seat, all I'm gonna get is a hundred. So I wish, I would like you not to put that on my seat because I want more than that. So I want as much as God see fit to give me, that's what I would like you to say over my seat. Or I will give you another seat. No, but I'm serious, you can do that because people don't know. Why? Because they don't listen to the tapes of the glory of God. They don't like it. Why? Because it's teaching people something. They want everybody to stay impressed. They don't want you to know. They don't want you to know that your words is life and powerful. Life and death and the power to tell them. You can kill your own ministry. You can kill your own time. You can kill your own nothing. You can kill it. You don't say it right. They didn't like me when I told them that. No, don't pray on them. I, I pray on my own seed. <laughs> I pray over my own seed. You might not hear your prayer anyway. I know you ain't mine. <laughs> Woo! Boy, boy, oh boy, oh boy. I love church. It shouldn't be stuffy. It shouldn't be messy. It should be soothing and, and energizing and nice. This is what we come to church for to feel, you know, better than normal. No, no, no. I want to be stuck. I don't go home angry, come to church angry and leave angry. I want to have a happy thought. You know? Something that's very inspirational. That's what the church is. It's an inspiration. That's what the Bible says. It's for inspiration. It's for reproof at times, but it's for, let me tell you something else I learned. I learned preaching is for the unsaved. Teaching is for the saved. So why are they always preaching all the time? But they're not teaching no more. Once you preach this in the street, yes, you can preach in the street, you can yell. This is something, this is why they backwards. They teach in the street and preach in the church. You're supposed to preach in the street and teach in church. This way you teach it. You preach out there, let them know what they're doing wrong. Let them know, yeah, all you want out there. But come in here, you teach them. He sat them down, and he taught every one of them, and then he, he taught them. He ain't preached them out there, he preached. And here you teach. This is the teaching. Hospitality. Hospitality and teaching. And that's what it should be. This is where God wants the church to be. He, I mean, I just don't write in certain terms to, you know, have this, the movements. Of, if you're in the spirit, man, I'm a close soon, but I'm telling you about Pentecostal churches. I was grew up Pentecostal. I was Pentecostal with Pastor Monroe in, in the seventh. We had a house, and we did. We made sure if you was preaching, you better make sure you had the power of the Holy Ghost, or we would have sat you down. Many preachers came in our church, we just, oh, no, no, that's okay. Because that was in the spirit of God. And I ain't letting you come with poison my church. Somebody said, how you gonna know what's the spirit and what's not the spirit? I know. Try the spirit, by the spirit. And what he was doing had no power. And had no biblical behind it. So I don't have to hear that. 
call me rude if you want to. It's okay, I'll save some souls from dying. But if you're sowing up this court because I was too scared to say no. They even sent people down and was shouting. I didn't like that, but they did. You could just come into church off the street drunk and start shouting. No, you didn't. Play with God. That's a mockery. That was considered playing with God. Get clean, get sober. Understand why, and then maybe God will give you a shout because you're saved now. Now people play with God too much. They play. They play. Remember what God said. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If you sow this way, you're going to reap this way. If you sow plain, you're going to reap plain. Get serious with God and teach the undoctrinated ministry of God. His Bible is what we need now. His Bible is what we need then. His Bible is what we need forever. You can talk about him, but you need to pray about him. Pray for the Antichrist. Pray. Don't talk. Pray. Let's keep our hearts and prayers up for Texas. Pray. News, they're going to tell you everything. They're going to tell you some of the stuff, but they ain't tell you about them babies that drown. They didn't tell you about those babies that couldn't get rescued. They didn't tell you about all of They didn't tell you all that. We need to pray. And I come to find out, it ain't God either. I'm going to say it. People tell me they get mad at me. I don't care. You don't like it too bad. Cut off the TV. Cut off the YouTube channel. Whatever it is. Because I'm going to say it. People, people think destruction coming from God. And it's not. God don't need to cause that kind of catastrophe to get your attention. He don't want all them people. That's the devil. The devil come to steal, kill, and destroy. That was destruction and death. And that was all because of the adversary being able to deliver such a dramatic episode. All the time he does it because this is his world and this is what he knew. And he does this to get you to God. But instead, oh God, why you do this? Oh God, oh God, no! Thank you, Jesus! So what you gotta do? God don't come to destroy and kill. That's his job. Yeah, they don't like me when I say that. They don't like me now when I say that. They don't call me that. Get an email or two. I ain't coming to your church more because you talk about it. It's biblical. It's biblical. What did God say? He ain't sending no more floods. And then it's also human nature. It's human nature. If you build where you can't get water to go out, it's gonna flood. <laughs> I see that on my roof. If the roof don't have a way to hell, it's gonna flood regardless of what God and the devil do. It's human nature. If you don't do it right, it's gonna happen. People are something else. Blame God for everything. Where we at? We almost done. And he said unto them, He that have ears to hear, let him hear. What else they got ears for? That's a good question. 
He had to tell them, if you got ears, hear. Because people got ears and don't even hear. And when he was alone, they asked. They that were about him, disciples, the twelve asked him in the, about the parable. Many people preach on the sower and the, the sower and the sower, but they never preach on the understanding of the parable, which is the next verse. They go every offering about sowing and reaping, sowing and sowing, but they never talk about the next verse. And the next verse, and he said unto them, unto you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but unto them that are without all these things done, that seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest any time they should be converted, and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know the parable? The sower soweth the word. He didn't say the money. So why are they talking about this at offering time? Hmm. Hmm. Then the Bible says, Hosea, my people want to swear for lack of knowledge. You go straight to hell because you don't know. You're right. What he said, and he said unto them, the sower sowed the word, and these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown, but when they have heard, slew foot, come up immediately, and take away the word that was sown in their heart. He didn't say money. He said the word, which is Jesus. So Satan comes and takes Jesus out of the person you just gave Jesus to. But they won't tell you that. They'll say that scripture means sow it into the basket. Gotta sow, man. Gotta sow. Sow, sow in my church because it's good sowing. No, he didn't say that. He's talking about the words that you give of God to the people. And you need to sow it correctly. I like that. Because some people don't think just talk garbage and just ain't, it ain't correct. It, it's not correct. It's not right that they do it. So it just goes nowhere. You got to read this statement. And he tells you about the growing seed and everything there. And it's, oh my God, this is so beautiful. And there, these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, they receive it with gladness and have no word in them, so it, and so endure before a time. In other words, they never came back to get more. And afterwards, when affliction or persecution arises, for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. They get mad because somebody said something to them about the word of God or something they did or said about the word of God. And, the, and this is, do you understand what I'm showing you? What he's showing you is that this is what he's talking about, the word of God. This is what he means that we sow. And you can even tell them when they say, he that so sparingly shall be sparingly. And they, they don't like me when I preach this stuff. Because they say, he coming after my money. Kill him, kill him. Kill him, dad. He talking about my money. Kill him, dad. He talking about my money. Don't let him talk. Close the church down. It's true. So sparingly, he sparingly, so bumpy. So the word of God sparingly. That means you're keeping it to yourself. So it bumbly means you telling everybody everything about the word of God. He worried more about you sowing the word of God than sowing money. Jesus owned everything. He don't need your money. He needs you to go tell people about his good news. That's what he wants you to do. Go into all ye worlds and compel them to come, teaching them and preaching to them about the God, the good news of Jesus Christ. Not about how to sow your money. They don't like me when I talk like that, but it's true. Be careful when they start money hungry people. Be careful. It's not about that. It's not about that. The actual, the, you can ask glory of God. We ain't never bought done. Yeah. Never bought done. All our years in ministry, never bought done. Why? Because we know how to go to God. And He just sends people. 
He sends people. He does what he do. Because we help others. We assist, we assist others. We don't try to destroy and take from others. We give people the word of God. What will you pay for the word? Nothing. Like we said last week, last week when I taught something, but we poor. Jesus wasn't broke. Peter wasn't broke. Paul wasn't broke. John. None of them were. They all had businesses. They left their business to follow Jesus. But after he gone, they went right back to business. They still worked. Paul was still a tent maker. He had a job. Peter still went right back in fish. Soon as Jesus died, he was gone. So I gotta make some money now. <laughs> no more miracles. I gotta go make my money. He went on that boat. He started fishing again. Yes, he did. Went right back to work. That don't mean that because Jesus don't stop. You get saved today, don't mean you stop work tomorrow. You be foolish. I quit. I got God. Holy will be me. No, what? <laughs> and save. Save for a rainy day. You gotta read this stuff. All right, we got where's the last one? And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. And the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches, that's that money thing, and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and becoming unfruitful. So because of your mind not being clean or bright, what they sow in you is taken away because of your mind. And that's not even your fault. They don't like that either, but I put that on you too. It's not the 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 the, the, the person's fault that you're so into. It's your fault because you didn't teach them or you didn't show them how to rightly divide the word that you gave them and how to lay aside their cares and let God work on them. So, it's good to get them saved, but it's also good to teach them why and what to do after they get saved. And why are they keep saying? And this is me here. And when, and these are they which are so yeah, yeah, on good ground, such as hear the word and receive the word, bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, some a hundredfold, some as much fold as God allows. We came to the dispensation. Remember what I told you, Mark is the Old Testament. He's talking what Jesus said. So the New Testament revival, revitalizes what he was saying. So now we no longer have to worry about set statues like a hundredfold. We now can go beyond the veil and ask and be given much more than normal. Because we are no longer under uh, bondage, we are under grace. So now we are able to say, I don't want a hundred fold. I want much more because you're not a God that I put limits on. That's why she said, take the limits off, take the limits off, take the limits And you still got them on. You're just singing a song, ain't doing nothing with it. They all say to take the limits off, and they still limit God to a hundredfold. He can't take the limit off, but you don't tell him. And then you tell him to take the limit off, and you say, put it back on. You tell him to put it back on, you said a hundredfold. As you see fit. Bless him. Is that okay? Was that good? Did y'all get something from there? I mean, it's not the, the normal everyday wear and tear. This was some good stuff. And this is what we have in the glory of God. The glory of God ministry teaches good stuff. The glory of God is not stale. It's not rehearsed. It's not bad. It's not playful. It's real. And that's what everybody understands about the glory. We real. 
We real. We bring it on. We real. And, 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 and don't look at my facial expressions and think I'm not real. I might laugh, I might joke, I might, but it's real. The way you deliver a message is important. And the way you deliver the word of God is important. Always remember that. Your words can destroy your ministry and your life. Your words can destroy everything you build. That's why the Bible say in, in the Old Testament, let your words be filled. I think it's in Isaiah. God is in heaven. You on earth. Let your words be filled. Don't say much. Just hush. Just pray and, think and leave alone. Don't talk all negative about everything. I know my liver fell out, but it's okay. I ain't gonna say it. I'm gonna say it's still in there. <laughs> Speak those things that be not as though they were, and they will become what they were not. And you gotta believe this stuff, man. You can't just come to church day in and day out and don't do nothing with the things you learn. Post on Facebook what you learn. It's all right. I'm not ashamed about pulling. Yeah, my bishop talked today on my things, and he told us that we don't have to get a hundredfold. We can get more than a hundredfold. People don't know that. They think they got a limit because it says a hundredfold in the Bible. No. It says acts and it shall be given. Pressed down, unmeasurable shall it be given to your bosom. Run it over. Run it over doesn't mean a hundredfold. It means way more than you can hold. More than your, your room could store. Continue to pay your tithes though. Continue to give your offering. But if you don't got it, don't be ashamed. Don't give what you don't have. I did it once and they gave 